What makes a house a home? Tonight, five celebrity homes bursting with style, individuality and character will compete to be crowned Celebrity Home of the Year. Five well-known Irish homeowners have opened their doors to our three expert judges. Design legend Hugh Wallace has a lifetime's experience in high-end design. I'm absolutely thrilled and excited to see how a celebrity lives compared with my mundane life. When I become a star. Award-winning interior designer Deirdre Whelan is intrigued to go behind the doors of these five homes. You see this person only on television. And what is it that they enjoy in their home? I think that's what's going to be fascinating. The bath is elevated. Acclaimed architect Declan O'Donnell is looking forward to some detective work. I think we should be able to figure out who it is, to be honest, because you can tell so much from someone by their home. It just looks great. I just think it's awesome. I can't wait to get started. Looking for functionality, individuality and clever design, the judges will score each celebrity home out of 10. The homeowner with the highest score will receive a €5,000 donation to a charity of their choice. And be crowned Celebrity Home of the Year. In 2007, communications expert and author Terry Prone and her husband Tom Savage fulfilled a lifelong dream when they bought a previously converted 200-year-old Martello Tower on the North Dublin coast. The notion of living in an old building and keeping it as old as possible always attracted me. But none of the previous owners had shared Terry's vision for how to transform a tower into a home. They tried to scrunch a suburban semi-detached into a tower. They had covered up every single stall with plaster, with big, ugly, modern staircase. It was awful. Anton, my son, Anton Savage, he is the greatest living expert on Martellos. And he said, Ma, the ground floor should have a spiral staircase. And Anton said to Brian, one of the workmen, when you get the kitchen units off that wall, have a go at it with a Kango hammer. And three days later, he texted me, I have found the spiral staircase. I feel like Indiana effing Jones. And for the first time, you could see and touch the blue stone that soldiers would have touched more than 200 years ago. Just a magnificent bit of what makes this my home is that every single room of it is stamped with my view of what it should be. Light and particular colours and authenticity. We wanted it to be as old as possible, but not phony or faux old. So we bought very old wood from a ship's chandlers to floor the tower. And then we realised this would be so embracing if you lined it with books. There is the most wonderful sense of being in a secret place that nobody knows about. Pure magic. This is my favourite spot. Peace, the warmth, being able to look at the flames and completely surrounded by my books. It's heaven. Living here is magic because there's a great sense of peace and welcome isolation. And when it's stormy here and you can see waves actually breaking over the seawall, oh, it's so fantastic. Having chosen Barnardo's as her charity, wow. the judges will now visit Terry's home armed with only the basic facts about her property and no idea that she lives there. What a view. Oh, my God. Well, it's a tower house on the sign, so there it is. An old Martello tower. It's just terrific. This is quite extraordinary because this is probably one of only 10 towers that are converted into homes in Ireland. And I just love the idea of seeing buildings reused, not falling into dilapidation. And that's what's extraordinary. I just can't wait to see the view from inside. Yeah. You're going to be out in the sea. Look at this. No hallways here. No. Is it a great to come straight into the kitchen? 
What I loved is the fact that you didn't go into an entrance hall and then you were brought into a formal room. For most people, the kitchen is the heart of the home. So I love seeing that because it immediately says, you're welcome. What a fantastic sized kitchen, extraordinary work surfaces. Mm. What's great is that you have windows everywhere and each one is like a little picture. I mean, that on its own, with the flower, the sunlight coming through, that little glimpse of the sea. It's great because your eye darts around, makes it feel a lot bigger. But have you seen what's through there? I know, I'm dying <laughs> to go in there. That looks absolutely amazing. Oh, look at this. Holy cow. You've got the original spiral staircase that goes all the way up to the top. What I love to see is the fact you can see the original building mm. and then the insertion of the modern elements in materials that are very sympathetic. I mean, they've cleaned it up and restored everything here just very beautifully. And the shape of that staircase as it goes up is, I mean, I've never seen anything like it. You have the drum from the outside, which is quite a unique shape. So I'm wondering, what are they going to do on the inside? You know, how are you going to adapt this into a home? And they just have this unbelievable nugget at the heart of what they've done here. They have a library at the very centre of their home. An amazing, unique thing to find in somebody's home. This is like theatre, isn't it? All the books, the red velvet curtains. You get a sense of real history here. It's in the round. You're waiting for yeah. the performance yeah. up on the balcony <laughs> yeah. to happen. When I become a star. Oh, really? <laughs> how brave you're feeling oh. uh, to stand on the glass floor. I just love the respect that the homeowner has here because this is the old reservoir where they kept the water. They haven't tried to cover it and in fact it's the opposite. They celebrate it. Yeah. They put it on show and it's just amazing to see that history and you see it here, you see it in the walls, you see it in the shape and I just think what the owner has done here to balance that and then turn it into the most unique space in your home as well is quite unbelievable. Because this is a very difficult space to actually handle. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. What I love is the fact that the owner has used their love of books to actually create the perfect environment yeah. for a library. Absolutely. And it just yeah. feels so natural. But from my point of view, I'd love to have seen softer furniture, a little bit of colour, something a bit more opulent and bigger and more comfortable, and definitely with cushions. Well, if it's soft and comfortable, you want. I mean, I think their favourite spot <laughs> has it all because this chair is all about that. You want to sink into it, it's right beside the fire. Yes. Actually, I want to have a go. Oh, it rocks. Is there a lever? Yeah. Yeah. Get comfortable, Declan. <laughs> oh. There you go, reading my book by the fire. I've got a view of everything in my Martello Tower that I've turned into my home. I just think this is just an incredible place to be. I'm looking forward to opening one of these curtains. And to find out what's behind. So, so which one will it be, Deirdre? I think we should go for that one there, Declan. Let's go. Go on. <gasps> Ta-da! Oh, wow! Lots of CDs. <laughs> I'm just kind of blown away, to be honest. It's nice the way the windows are low, you know, so when you're sitting down, you actually get to enjoy that view all the way around. It's an unbelievable location and a really unique shaped room as well. It's curved, it's mimicking the shape of the drum. Again, it's another awkward shape to kind of resolve with furniture and make it work. And I think there are functional elements that are missing here in terms of lighting here. You know, the fact it's miles away from the kitchen as well, but you're adapting an old Martello tower. You're going to have that. And I'd say the owner comes in, sits down, thinks about what they need to do, and they never get around to doing anything <laughs> because they just stare out the window. And that's exactly what I would do as well. Look at that. Look at the sunset, mm. your own beach. Isn't that just mind blowing? They had used the depths of the wall of the Martello Tower in a really nice way. You know, you had a collection of CDs on one wall and then the other one, you went into a dressing area and then into the bathroom. Fantastic. <gasps> There's your perfect picture window, Declan. <laughs> the bath is elevated. Oh my God. We'd never get you out of that. You know, you'd be, you'd be <laughs> stuck in that bath. Even if I turn into a prune. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever been in a house like this with a view like this out on the peninsula. It's all about the views. It's all about the location. It's all about enjoying where you live. When this person decided to renovate this building, the elements on the outside, so the extensions, would have already been there. So it was like, that's your envelope. You can't touch it. You can't do anything to it. 
So that's a huge restriction. And I think the owners have done an extraordinary job because it is homely, it is warm. And then the Martello Tower, where they've used their imagination and love of books to actually create a special place, a magical place, a little bit like a Hogwarts library. And I just love that. I definitely say they're into writing, definitely into history, no doubt about that. And communicating, yeah. you know, really interesting yeah. in the written word and how we interact as people yeah. together. I just think I'd love to meet them. Yeah, I'd say they'd be an amazing dinner guest. Mm -hmm. Oh my. <gasps> wow. Oh, this is amazing. Oy. <laughs> wow. -wee. Look at the sunset. Look at the view. Oh my God. It's wild. You know, you're absolutely out meeting nature head on. I love it. What an amazing place to wake up to every morning, no matter what the weather is. Terry's home will now be marked out of 10. One score will be held back until the judges have visited all five celebrity homes. Only then will their combined scores be revealed. I think there are functional elements that could be improved on here, but you have to forgive the homeowners because they're working within such constraints. It's just breathtaking for me. I've been blown away and it is unique. I give this home a nine. I loved the sense of welcome when you came in. A home has to have a heart, it has to have a soul. You get that 100% in this home. And for that reason, I'm going to give this home a nine. I think the owners here have done an extraordinary job to be able to live in this home. However, for me, I'd just love to have seen a layer of colour because I think that would have added another layer to this unique and special building. World-renowned fashion designer Helen Cody bought her double-fronted Victorian cottage 16 years ago, which she shares with her partner, architect Rory Murphy. I walked in and it was really badly, it was in bits, but I could see that it just had really elegant bones. It was a completely instant love affair from the beginning. 16 years on, the home has slowly evolved into a space that really reflects Helen's passions. And when she hired an architect to help create a studio at the back, Rory came into her life. Four years ago now. If it wasn't for the studio, then we wouldn't have met. Oh, that's a good point, actually, yeah. So, so <laughs> that's where we started. It forms now a backdrop to the house. So the whole house seems much bigger, but it feels like one large room that has an inside and an outside. What's wrong? What's the matter? His influence has been incredible in the house because he's put manners on it. And he has the most incredible ideas for what we'd love to do. It could be. Yeah. With fashion, it's like bang, bang, bang. And I've no patience, you know, no. so. <laughs> so if I discuss an idea, I have to get it into her head very quickly or she's lost interest. <laughs> I thought I was going to design the kitchen, it's already in, it's done, finished. I've been to gone. Ikea, bought it, and two days later he came back and he went, what in God's name have you done? <laughs> it's, um, he has an incredible idea to make a much bigger, kind of cosy kitchen with a wood-burning stove and all that stuff. We'll get there eventually, but we just can't do it right now. This is the room where, when the dresses are completed, my clients come. People come in and they say it's like an Aladdin's cave because this is where all the couture is kept. It's completely private. If they want my help, I'm there for them. And it's just a really nice, intimate way of looking at the new work. Architects, they make space, but they don't always make homes. And Helen's eye is incredible and she brings another layer. I think there's part of me in every single room, whether it's cushions or saw furnishings, and then I collect paintings, I also paint myself. So it's just very much about the art and the textures are more important. And I like the wall surfaces to sort of recede so that nothing's fighting with anything else. I guess this is our favorite spot because of all the entertaining we do in this room. It's a fun room. The fire's always lighting. The fact that you can have drinks there, it's connected, but it's not right beside it. But also it's far enough away from the kitchen, which is where I make all my messy cooking. <laughs> There's a huge part of me that wants to be in a corner going, no, no, we know that that's not right, we're going to fix that. Your house proud, you want people to love it. It just wraps you up, it's solid, it's comfortable. It's just a really cosy home and we, we love it. With Focus Ireland as their chosen charity, the judges will now visit Helen and Rory's Victorian cottage. This is a lovely little Victorian terrace. Double fronted as well. Mm. Yeah, and I love the architectural grey front door and the window box look really pretty. Mm. Shall we go in? Yeah, let's. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is so nice. 
There's a real sense of style here. You've got the lower section panel, lovely radiator covers, and then you have these lovely cornices and ceiling details with the contrast to those modern light fittings. Love the color tones. Mm. Kind of just draws you into it. Oh, this is gorgeous. Oh, I love this space. It's just so fresh and so crisp. And look, we have their favorite spot. The sense of style in here is just it's right up there. It's, I mean, look at the table alone. It's a very, very cool house. Well, well it's just the creativity, mm. you know, so you have a very simple table and chairs, but all of a sudden it's brought to life by these amazing fashion magazines. I'd say that table is different every week as well. And it brings an, a layer of color and humor and fun. And then I notice, you know, <laughs> and it looks like every single one has a different bit of text on it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, brilliant, isn't Each it? Cake. Obviously somebody who's very, very creative and likes to be inspired. Yeah. It's got that feeling of their personality and their creativity. And that, as we're always saying, is what really makes a home at the end of the day. Hugh, that sofa's got your name written all over it. Hasn't it just? I love the color tone of the couch. And the fact that the fireplace is elevated is really, really nice. Great bit of soft lighting in the bookcase. So it creates a lovely atmosphere in here. It's very, very simple. The storage is in the right place. Beautiful artwork. Mm -hmm and she wants to live in Paris. Absolutely, darling. <laughs> and what I love about this is we talk about grey. Yeah. yeah. So everything in here is in greys and blacks, yeah. mm. but the colour and tone of the grey on the wall is really warm, and it's the artwork mm. that adds that beautiful punch that you need. What I think is extraordinary is the detail these people have expressed their personality in a way that's very confident, but not in your face. It's all very subtle. In a way, I'm very envious of the eye to detail that these people have in this home. Ooh, the bedroom. I love the feeling in here. The bed is just beautifully dressed, really simple, nice cushions, gorgeous throw at the end pop of colour in the chair in the corner. And then the nice low level lighting over the bed. Seems to be a little switch on the side so you can control it without yeah. having to get out of the bed. That's sort of my pet hate. Yeah, it's really nice. I love the way they've kept things quite restrained. And we have a... A corset. I was thinking of getting <laughs> one of those. Yeah. I thought I thought it would be good, <laughs> you know? And what I really love in here is that the fact, you know, you have that window up top, which allows all the light in, and then you have this internal window down below, which opens up into the extension. When I'm lying in bed, Hugh, you can be making me breakfast out there. Gorgeous. <laughs> Declan, I actually think it's the other way around. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. I'm in the bed, you're making breakfast. <laughs> Where's Deirdre? I'm doing the cooking. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Happy days. Love the doors from the hallway down into the kitchen. Love the windows and that bit of height, the skylight as well. They've gone for open shelving, yes. which yes, shows yes. lots of personality, shows what the <laughs> owners here are interested in. It's the objects that do all the talking in here. I think the dining table is fantastic, and I absolutely love the singer chairs. I mean, they're brilliant. And a conversation piece. Yes. In, in its own right. And I think that when you look at the room here, the table and chairs just aren't happy. You know, they, they're dying to turn around. They've got the fridge over here, hob down there, the sink here, and my oven is here. So if I'm a cook, I'm a bit all over the place. Mm. I think it would have been so much nicer if the kitchen had been where we are down here. Yeah, I'd agree because there's a lot of dead space over there, you know, and I think you could have some of the kitchen over there. You're even closer to the bedroom when I'm handing you the eggs in the morning queue. <laughs> we know they can do it, because we've seen it in the other rooms, and here, it's not quite clicking for me. You have to make every square inch count, and I don't think the homeowners have finished this house. The style, the personality, that understanding of space that we'd seen elsewhere wasn't there for me in that room, and that's why I think it's not finished. Oh, very nice. Whoa! Oh. This is oh, a little study, home office, and it's just, Absolutely perfect. Getting a real indication of the homeowner here now, obviously a designer or an architect. It must be really amazing to sit in here, mm. away from home, but yet at home, and just be inspired. What this room is, is facing set. Yes. Mm. So you've got these lovely doors, you can completely open up out to that terrace. Mm. Everything is connected, and what you have is an enclosure. 
What I particularly like in here is the extraordinary collection of bits and pieces. These people are obviously into their fashion, into design, really understand color and yeah. textures. It just feels so easy. And you know why? It's the gray, 50 shades of gray from front to back. <laughs> the one color on the walls, that's it. One color on the walls and the life is in everything else. This home was about confidence, design detail, consistency. And yet when you went into the kitchen, I think that just disturbed the balance in the whole house. But as a home, I really loved it. I'm giving this home an eight. I love the sense of space, that simplicity of the color palette, the honesty of leaving the existing architecture intact. And then there was lots of fun had, and it made you feel very welcome and very relaxed. And for that reason, I'm going to give this home a 10. I loved the less is more that you got in here because the owners know how far to go before they stop in terms of furniture, in terms of style, in terms of color. And as soon as you see it, you just feel instantly at ease. And that's what you had in every room in this home, barring the kitchen. TV presenter and style entrepreneur Darren Kennedy lives in an open plan warehouse apartment with his partner Aidan and their dog Harry. The first time I ever moved at a home, I lived in an apartment in France. So for me, it was a no brainer. This open plan living doesn't really suit everyone, but for me, it works. I think when you live in an open plan space, it's really important to have defined spaces that work together and that flow. So while they are separate and they function individually, I was very conscious that I didn't want to create barriers. The placement of a rug can really kind of center and ground an area. So that's why the living space, the rug is kind of the, the focus point. And once you're sitting there, you don't realize that, you know, the kind of dining area is to your right. Okay, come on. This is my favorite spot in the apartment. Every morning I take five minutes here, have my coffee, Harry will curl up on my lap, just enjoy the light, the day starting off. Once I get up from this spot, we're off. I guess the style is colorful and eclectic, a little bit like my sense of aesthetic for anything. I was definite that I wanted one dramatic wall and I like the intents of this kind of teal color as well. It kind of draws you in. The palm prints just kind of reflect the greenery that I already have in the apartment in the actual plants. I've actually had to scale back on the plants because I think at one stage it was starting to look like a jungle. I wanted a bookshelf. Building things right up to the ceiling kind of emphasizes the length. It's like women who wear, you know, black shoes with black jeans. It makes their legs look longer. I've created a space that I'm really happy in and comfortable in, and that's the most important thing. And obviously, if they like it and they appreciate it, well, wouldn't that be lovely? The judges visit Darren's apartment. He has chosen to support the Temple Street Foundation. Look at the shoe collection. <laughs> no. <laughs> you see the way they're displayed, though? Yes. It's one out and one back, so you yeah. can see exactly the detail of the front and the back of each. Must be a pet in the house as well. Small pet, look at that. The interesting thing about the lampshade, which I love, is the inside of it is in gold. Mm. So it gives you this amazing glow. Oh, look this at is this. just a great, <gasps> this big, is a fab open space. Plan. Yeah. There is a saying that space and light is the ultimate form of sophistication. So when you walk in somewhere that's just open, lots of natural light, well thought out, it's just restful. This is slick. I'm really impressed. Great kitchen, lots of counter space, beautiful materials, love the island unit, which is in this dark black polished granite, offset by the gray matte finish. This is a very simple kitchen. And then I love the idea of the bits and pieces on the shelf including a glass collection. Love the color tones, the fact that they are lovely green, but it's elements of it that have been highlighted and then the lovely pewter color on the knobs. And the candelabra, Hugh, I think that's been left out for you. Absolutely. Without a doubt. This person doesn't have clutter. The elements are here are here for a reason. And I just think that's great. And I'm intrigued by the dining room table because when no one is here, it all tucks up. It's very neat and it looks like a sideboard. 
And then when you need it, it all comes out. You've got benches, loads of people can pile in and have dinner. I thought that was a super piece of design. There's an understanding of what space was available and what size the furniture should be. They're really ticking all the boxes here for me, guys. We're in the living area. There is a lovely tonal quality to the room. The fact that it's not all matching either, mm. but yet it just kind of flows from one thing into another. It's all about the window, the gorgeous sunlight coming in and that bookcase, which I just think is superb because it's floor to ceiling. What's even more fascinating about the books is not only do they go by color in terms of white, black, pink, blue, and so on, they actually go across as well from dark blue to light. So it's like the colors of the rainbow. It's all about the sofas as well. I see this is their favorite spot. I like the fact, you know, that there's a mix of sofas here. You've got one in a fabric, one that's leather, loads of different colors. And you just get a real sense that this person loves fashion style. And did you spot the bike? I, I did actually. Are you gonna try it out? Yeah, I could see myself oh. going to the shop. <laughs> you did that quite well actually, I'm Thank impressed. you very much. The pièce de résistance was a gold bike. And I love the photograph of the dog that obviously is pride and place in this home on the mirror. Declan, look, your hairstyle. <laughs> is that what you look like in the morning? I wish. I wish <laughs> I was that cute first thing in the morning. Oh, look at this. Gosh, the master bedroom. Very, very nice. Very masculine. Yes, indeed. I would say in terms of the style. That dark greys, a little bit of gold. I do really like the bedside lockers and I love the lighting on either side. I think that works really, really well. And what I love about this is those cushions, those lovely linens, beautiful throw. Mm. And I think this person is all about tactility. Mm -hmm. However, in this bedroom, I'd love to have seen some of those colors, you know, those blues or even that flash of green. I think it would have just lifted this room so much. I'm with you, Hugh. I think it needs a bit of color in here. It just feels a little bit too monochromatic for me. I don't mind that because I think in the bedroom, it's a bit more restful. I think the chair there, that's a pop of color, a little birdcage that's given it just enough, especially with the artwork. So I'm fine with that. I think they've gone for it. It's all about the bed. I think my fellow judges are being a little bit too harsh. They wanted more there, but then they're always wanting more. I think the owner or owners that live here, they have real eye for design and it felt very comfortable, very relaxed. This was a fabulous apartment and I enjoyed every moment of it and I'm going to give it an eight. I think the owner here has shown an innate sense of style, passion, color. What I loved about this apartment is it's all about clean lines and simplicity. Lovely artwork, lovely bits and pieces, and that extraordinary bookcase. I'm giving this home an eight. I think there's a number of different styles going on here. It's not just one perfect style that's cut out of a magazine. It's a bit of a mixed bag. There's lots of different things going on, but it's done with flair. They know how to use color, how to put things together. Publisher, broadcaster and entrepreneur Nora Casey lives in her extended Victorian home with her son Dara. We really liked the feeling of the place. Do you know when you walk in somewhere and you just like the atmosphere? Everybody who came into it said, isn't this the most beautiful house? It was lovely, it's sweet. So I guess most houses have lots of happy memories because Richard got sick very soon after we came back. This house had nothing but kind of slightly bad memories. He was diagnosed with a tumour in his kidney, but within a week they found it in his spine and his liver. So the house became his refuge because he didn't want to be in hospital. It just wasn't a safe haven after he passed away. I know it's only bricks and mortar and it's walls and great spaces, but even walking into the kitchen, Richard's, if you'd seen the house at the time, Richard's pictures were all over the wall. And I got so used to sort of having coffee with him in the morning when he was alive, I just couldn't get out of the habit of sitting, having coffee with him after he'd passed. So I'd say it's taken me the guts of two years. I think the whole feel of the house is different and that helps enormously when I walk in. It's very much me and I think I definitely feel like this is my home. My house is an extension of the office. My whole working life is enveloped in my personal life. And whether that's doing TV or radio or writing books or working with the editors and the magazines, I like that it's all intertwined in everything that I do in my life. It never, it never feels like it's hard or stressful when it's like that. 
So I guess this is my favorite spot in the whole house. I absolutely love it. It's my pride and joy. I've spent thousands of hours in here writing the previous book, writing the current book, writing articles. I'm never happier than when I'm in here. It's just a little oasis of calm. There are days when I stare at that screen and there's nothing coming back except a blank screen, but I persevere. I don't think that anybody would ever expect me to live in a house like this. I love the kitchen and Dara and I would have all our big conversations here. In the morning, not so much. It tends to be just mum talking. The only indulgence I have in the house is I have a television next to the bath. I know that's really ridiculous, but it's kind of a, a thing for me. I never thought I'd be able to do that. So it's not a big house, but I do have one or two little touches that I love. Elephants are a big theme in my life. You will see them everywhere. In anything that I can, even in the spoons, that sense of trying to bring nature in. That cow out there, Miss Clover is her name. And they were auctioning it for Jack and Jill. I'd be a big supporter of that charity. And this is her rightful home. She's a great talking point. She's very funny. She makes me laugh all the time. Every time I look out, I feel like I'm looking out on a tiny little bit of my mother's countryside in Leitrim. <laughs> I really love it again because Dara and I have created some happy memories, so they've balanced out. And I think if Richard was alive, if he had his dearest wish, it would be perhaps that I'm doing what I'm doing now, that I finally found a home that I loved again, and it's our home. With Nora choosing to support Focus Ireland, the judges will now visit her home. Lovely Victorian end of terrace. What's particularly nice is the fan light over the door. Yeah, it's a lovely sense of arrival and I love the colour of the front door. Yeah, you've got the original granite steps and the railings, which is great. And I think the wall lights are super. Bit of a clue for the owner there. Bit blingy, a little bit art deco. Think we should go inside? Yes. Ooh. Wow. Wow. Goodness me. I didn't expect the stairs going down and Straight up. It's quite surprising because these houses are a little bit deceptive from the front. They look like single story and they might be quite small, but mm. of course you have the steps up, which means you've also got steps down somewhere and you've great height in here, lots of original details, which you'd expect. And it's a very nice, welcoming hallway. I just love the artwork. Light fitting in the center is great. Beautiful bits and pieces going on. And they've widened the staircase, mm. which really gives you a real sense of arrival and yeah. going down, so yeah. shall we? Absolutely. Indeed, indeed. I love the change in level here, the fact you're in the front door and you're immediately right down again. Amazing collectibles, they obviously travel a lot and it's yeah. all about the artwork which is everywhere and it's, yeah, it's gorgeous. I'm wondering whether that portrait actually has a special meaning to the owners here because it seems to be in quite a prominent um, yes. place and there's nothing else around it to distract from it. And the texture Yes. on the wallpaper just gives us a total lift. Very subtle, but very nice. Oh, wow. a study or a library. Yeah, and it's pink, sorry. Pink walls. <laughs> yeah. I kind of wasn't expecting it. It's a soft, muted pink, but it's not very often you see pink anymore, and it works quite well in here. And I just realized, this is obviously their favourite spot. Actually, it's very nice to sit here and then look out into that courtyard and the lovely blossom this time of the year. I mean, mm. beautiful. Really, really nice. I'd say this person is into fashion as well because you've got these beautiful little sketches by Paul Costello. Very nice. Oh, look at this big open plan, kitchen living. When you come down here, you've got a real fresh, modern architectural box, mm. nice light fittings, just yeah. a lovely sense of space and warmth. Yeah, I think the shape of it is very successful because like we said, they've made that courtyard and I love to see that because it preserves natural light that makes everything feel so much bigger. We're down the steps, it's quite a long room, but the fact the kitchen is over to one side, I think that means in terms of flow and function, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. What's lovely is that the floor finish outside and inside are at the same level and it just feels like the gardens are really part of the living space. Great kitchen, really practical, lovely surface to work off. Big stove as well, so definitely the owner loves to cook. I think they love having people around for dinner. Even the layout with the island there, you can see people coming in from the hallway. Super kitchen. What a fantastic living room. I just adore it and the opulence oh, and know. touch and feel and the modern interpretation of the fire. I think it's fantastic. 
I feel like we've stepped into your living room, Hugh, with all the glitz <laughs> and the cushions and the metallics and all of that. I think the big sliding doors are awesome because they can slide all the way back and this becomes an indoor outdoor space. I mean, the terrace there really is part of this one room. I think the personality of the homeowner really comes through, but also the fact it's just very comfortable. Super. Oh, thank you. And the artificial grass, brilliant. Yeah, I just think this garden, everything about it is really cute, especially this guy who just looks great. I just think it's awesome. Do you know what? I think it's really nice and I love the choice of the furniture. The fact that it's really inviting, you know, it's, it's robust and the nice dark wicker. I mean, it's a smashing space, really is. We've got this wonderful piece of artwork, which I just adore. Very warm and fascinating to look at. It almost draws you up the stairs and mm. into the master bedroom. Very nice, very tastefully done. The bed looks very decadent, doesn't it? All those cushions, goodness me, you're going to spend a bit of time taking them off getting to bed. Quite evident that the person who lives here is a female. Mm. You've got these beautiful little girly lights. Very interesting furniture, sort of throwback to the 50s. Yes. And two interesting doors behind you. Ooh, Great. Isn't that super? nice. Isn't that fantastic? Oh, every house should really have one, shouldn't they? <laughs> it's been sorted for a while. I love going into a home and the person has dedicated a space to a walk in wardrobe. Hi. The heart. Did you? You're just so hurt. <laughs> the homeowner's obviously incredibly organized because all the boxes were labeled so you know exactly where to find everything. Yes, I am jealous. <laughs> The bathroom, wow, nice size. And isn't it great that they have natural daylight coming into a bathroom? I think that's so important. And again, the consistency is here. Everything is detailed. Very, very nice bathroom to have off your main bedroom. What is that? I'm trying to figure out what it's is a, that? It's a television. Th yeah. This person looks at telly a lot. So we're obviously <laughs> lying in the bath, being inspired. Wonder if the person who lives here has been on TV, maybe, because I don't think it's just chilling out watching TV. I think it's part of their work. Go so on. you lie in the bath yeah. looking, looking at, at yourself on the telly. I tell there's just no end to it. Sure, just, I'm you. There's just no <laughs> end. <laughs> this house is about classic design, but fantastic out there opulence. A lovely combination brought together perfectly in this home. I'm giving this fabulous home a nine. I just love the whole colour palette. I love the way they use their artwork to bring colour into the home. This was a great home and I'm going to give it a nine. I think you should always get a sense of the homeowner when you walk through the front door. And that's what I got here. I got that in abundance. Rugby pundit, writer and mental health advocate Brent Pope bought his 1950s suburban home 10 years ago. Seeking a clean, uncluttered and minimalist interior, he set about a two-year renovation. I didn't want to move into something that was kind of new or it had been done up. I wanted to put my own spin on it. So I uh, saw this place, saw the potential in it. The thing that struck me most about it was when I went outside was these two lovely old apple trees. This had been part of an orchard, but uh, yeah, let's fell in love with it. My father retired years ago, but he's always worked hard all his life and he's great with his hands. So he came over, so it was a labour of love between both of us and we sort of did it the old fashioned way. We did sort of one room at a time. And we did all the demolition work, hours and hours and weekends spent pushing wheelbarrows out to skips out the front of knocking down blocks and that. It was a special time. Dad's getting on now, he's in his mid to late 80s and he won't be coming back over sadly because you know, you get too elderly to travel, it's a long ways. But he's seen what it turned out like and, and he's as proud as I am. I suppose we've tried to keep it away from that sort of bachelor pad look because, you know, I don't even like being judged like that either, so I've tried to keep that away from it. I think people would expect to see more rugby or sporting things. I mean, I did try to stay true to myself and say, I like it, so that's what matters, you know, whether somebody else comes in here and says, I wouldn't have put that there, that's fine. I love art of a certain kind. I love art with a story. Self-taught artists who maybe come to their journey through homelessness or people from mental health organisations. So that's the art that I collect and that's the art I love. See, I come from a, a kind of rural background. I grew up outside a lot of the time. So again, it's that connection between New Zealand and Ireland and 
It was the fact that I can hear the birds chirping, a little bit of tranquility or that sort of oasis in Dublin. And for that reason, I guess this has to be my favourite spot. This house is a, is, is a true reflection of who I am and where I am in my life. And I surround it by things that are me, you know, and whether that's the art, whether that's the choice of colour, whether that's the garden, and whether it's little things from New Zealand, collectibles that I brought back every year to keep me grounded there as well. That means a lot to me. It tells a story. That's why I want it. I don't want people to come in here and say, oh, look, it's a, it's a rugby house, because it's not, and nor will it ever be. It'll just be a house of me. Highlighting the importance of mental health, Brent's chosen charity is Pieta House. As the judges arrive to tour his home, they have no idea he lives here. Beautifully proportioned 1950s semi-detached home. Yeah, I love the colour palette. It's yeah. great. Yeah, it looks like it's been renovated recently as well. Love the motorbike. I wonder if that's a bit of a clue. Well, let's see. Hey. Yeah. Fresh. It's a very nice space. It's great having the glass in the door because it's nice and bright. The hallway was small, but it had lots of really nice touches. Certainly the artwork, the materials. And I think that really helped it. And a great little table there. Just got that texture to it, a little bit of fun. I love 1950s homes because they're usually very elegant, they're very simple, and there's a sophistication to them because of the architecture that I really like. Oh, oh my goodness. Wonderful. Oh, that's a nice room, isn't it? The size of it. They've obviously removed the wall. It's one big room now. I think they've done a great job in creating a really nice, big, warm, welcoming room, and I think the fireplace is the focus point because it's all about warmth, the crackle and the sound and the smells. The artwork is really interesting, isn't it? Mm. And I love the fact that the artwork is hanging where I'd like to see it, you know, a little bit lower. You can immediately engage with it. I'd say all these pieces are here for a reason, you know, mm. they've stories behind them mm. or were collected over time, all handmade. So there's just intriguing bits and pieces yeah, in this yeah. home. Absolutely beautiful. Take one look at the yeah. chair there. Yeah. Oh. That's a man couch, isn't it? This is fabulous. The red for me is a little bit aggressive. Well, it's a statement. It and is. It's going it to polarise sure opinion. Is. People will either look yeah. at it and love it or they'll hate it. The person who lives yeah, here, they yeah. obviously love it. But it is, yeah, it's red. There's no getting away from it. I reckon that a man lived in this house. Men have a habit of going for quite strong colours. It has to be very distinct. The fact that it was the only really colour in the room and then they used it in the cushions, it just felt a bit intense. Into the kitchen, dining, big, big open plan space. It's huge. Oh my God, the colour again. We're seeing flashes of red everywhere. It has to be a man that lives in this house because <laughs> I'm telling you now, I think it's the, the red and the sofa. black yeah. and the cream. It is a bit in your face, but I love the splash back and the white. So for me, the kitchen works, but I would like to have seen a warmer colour on the walls. I think it would have helped this room. It's quite a cold palette, but great big space. They've obviously extended here. They've done loads of work to the house. It's very simple. Amazing garden. Oh as well with the sliding doors out to that. I'm drawn to the map, which is New Zealand. I think it's a man. I think um, it's someone who used to play sport, maybe. I'm rugby, thinking rugby, rugby. New yeah. Zealand. There's a big thing there. And obviously, I think that's beginning to piece things together for me. So I'm intrigued to see if that continues the more we go on. Wow, look at this. It's a gorgeous garden. Beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it super? And you've got that original end granite wall, mm -hmm. which is lovely because it gives a real sense of privacy. It's their favourite <sighs> spot as well. And I think this is all about the hammock. Look at the west sunlight coming in now. And these two amazing apple trees. Oh, go on, Deirdre, <laughs> you're in. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. It's a joy to see it in somebody's garden, you know, and especially between the apple trees and where you chill out and enjoy your beautiful surroundings. And the privacy here is quite extraordinary. And I love the actual peace and quiet and the fact that you can hear the birds sing. Mm. Yeah. Any good? Yeah. <laughs> you can leave me here. The magical hammock. I mean, it reminded me of my childhood. We had a hammock and I loved sitting in the hammock and just daydreaming. That's what you do. And what a lovely thing to do. Wow. Oh, my. Ooh, oh. interesting. Hey, uh, uh. Rugby! <laughs> Told you. <laughs> Told you. 
Very nice. Oh, this is more what I was hoping we would find after we've been in the living room. And I think the curtains are just perfect. It's a real masculine room. The, the tartan just kind of completes it. This is a beautiful room, a real gentleman's room. Yeah. It's actually very tastefully done, I have to say. And then you have the contrast of this sort of little girly piece in that lovely yellow with the pattern print. Yeah, it's gorgeous. All of those layers that maybe we didn't see enough of in the kitchen, but it's, it's yeah, here. it's yeah. super. Yeah. As we move through this home, there's a sense of this being a man who lives in this home, that they're sporty. But what I really adored about this house is you got a sense of the sensibility and gentleness and that comes through in those amazing paintings. I'm giving this home an eight. The bones of what they've done here has been done very, very well. The only thing I would change is probably some of the furniture, but everything else, opening up of the rooms, lovely artwork, big pieces of glass, sliding door into a gorgeous garden. I give this home an eight. I thought this was a really interesting home and it had lots of interesting things happening in it. The things that really stood out for me was the lovely diversity of artwork. I love seeing that because it tells you something about the people that live there. Now that Deirdre, Hugh and Declan have viewed all five celebrity homes, it's time to see how they measure up against each other. The homeowner with the highest score will receive a 5,000 euro donation for their chosen charity and be crowned Celebrity Home of the Year. First, Declan reveals what he scored the converted warehouse apartment. I love the fact when you walked into this apartment, you were surprised because you had that big open plan space, great big ceiling height, lovely big windows, and yet within that, it was all zoned out. Everything was carefully thought about. Just thought there was tons and tons of style here, and I give it a nine. Woo! Oh, nice eight. score. That's two eights and a nine. That's 25. Super score. Let's see who lives here. And it is... Okay. okay. Woo! Darren <laughs> Kennedy, style entrepreneur. I think that's a great match. But well, shall we move on? Yeah. Deirdre will now reveal what she scored the 1950s renovated suburban home. I loved the fact that the favourite spot was outside and yeah. that was the biggest clue that someone really <laughs> outdoorsy yeah. lived in here. A really, really great home, but... For me, the kitchen wasn't quite of the standard that we saw in the rest of the house. And for that reason, I gave this home a seven. I think it deserved a bit more. So that's two eights and a seven, which is a total of 23. It's time to find out who lives there. And I think I clocked it. I think it's Brent Pope. Okay, ah. let's see if you're right. Ah, yes. you're right, well done. I think there was loads of hints in yeah. this home as to the homeowner, and I'm thrilled that it's Brent Pope. And he obviously loves that red chair. Declan reveals what he scored the renovated Victorian cottage. This had a great hallway. As soon as you walked in, directly in there, and I always find if the hallway is good, it sets the tone for everything else. I really love this home, and I give it an eight. I think it deserved better. That's two eights and a ten. Twenty. Yes. Six. We have... Oh, my goodness, Helen Cody. Yeah. Famous fashion designer. Yeah. And Rory Murphy, the architect. Kind of makes sense now. Hugh will now reveal what he scored the Martello Tower. They created that magical library in the middle and used a space where everybody else would have been scratching their head. However, for me, I just felt there was an inconsistency in the furniture. For that reason, I gave it a seven. So that's a nine, a nine, and a seven. That's a total of 25. We have... Oh. Hey, hey, Terry Prone, <laughs> amazing. Oh, that is just so apt, isn't it? She's done... A Quite extraordinary job. Shall we move on? One to go. Let's. Finally, Declan reveals what he scored the extended Victorian home. I loved the layout, the arrangement, the fact that that extension was done perfectly to prioritise natural light. It was all about the style, the glitz, but the confident sense of style that was there for me. And I really got a sense of the homeowner. I give this home a nine. It shows you that the strength of the homeowner has made this quite a special home. Yeah. And for once, we're all in unison. That's three nines. I make that 27. And we have a winner. Let's have a look. 
Yeah. <laughs> Nora Casey. I would never have guessed it was her house. A fantastic winner for this competition. Yeah, amazing home, tons of personality, everything we're looking for. Yeah, I think we should go and tell her. Hello. <laughs> Guess why we're here. Nora, so delighted to be here and to say you are celebrity <laughs> home of the year no. and what a fantastic home. Oh, yeah. That's so nice. Oh. <laughs> Thank you well so done, much. well Thank done. You. Absolutely fantastic. What home. is your charity? I work very closely with Focus Ireland and Sister Stan. I went to school actually where Sister Stan is. So I think over the last couple of years, I've increasingly been working with Focus to try and highlight issues around women, families, children. The nice thing for me was, not in a big way, but opening the door to my home to try and raise funds for other people to do the same. Because I know the feeling of being yeah. in a home and yeah. the sanctuary it gives you. Like I think that's a fantastic that's cause very and very apt actually, Absolutely, you know, home yeah. of the year and it's... Absolutely. Brilliant. We're all just moving in, so yeah. we're, we're <laughs> happy. They used we're to happy. accuse me of being a dragon, and I'm much nicer now, but there's nothing dragon-like about you three either. <laughs>